Good morning. Good morning to all of you at home who are traveling this holiday weekend. I know many of you are all across the country right now celebrating the holiday weekend. So we send our love and our grace and God's care with you, whether you're in the car right now driving or whether you are at home. God's grace and peace be with you from all of us in the sanctuary here. God's grace and peace and love and rest be with each one of you. I'm Pastor Jess, and on behalf of the whole congregation, we are so glad that you are here this morning, worshiping and finding rest for our weary souls at the picnic of peace. The Lord's table today is a picnic of peace. As you can see, it looks a little different than maybe in other months, and you'll hear more about that in the sermon. But as we enter more deeply into the summer rest, there's some new things today. Uh, if, did any of you see the devotional in the Faith Works Weekly on Wednesday? On Wednesday, we sent this out uh, for our Faith Works Weekly. Uh, if you didn't get the email, please email the office to get on the email list. Uh, and, but we also printed copies for you available both at that door and that door as well. This is a six week devotional that we'll be going through together. And it is similar to the Lent and Advent devotional, but a little more light and summery. Uh, and, and it's called Sing, Play, Summer. Uh, six butterfly fish, what a great group name, songs for the best summer ever. Now, it might not be the best summer ever, but we're going to sing, play, and have summer together. And um, in your emails every week, we are sending out the songs for you for free uh, to go along with the week. You're going to hear one of the songs today called Lemonade. 
and it's a gospel bluegrass group, and it's fun for the whole family. The whole family, young and old, uh, will enjoy this. So please take one of these on your way out if you want a hard copy, or it is also in your email as well. A few other announcements. I got a list from the folks that were traveling. Uh, from the refugee uh, committee of Zach Lee and Kathy, who I know are online, uh, they want me to let you know that the volunteers have arranged for English tutoring for our family. Many of you know that we're sponsoring a refugee family here in our community, uh, along with two other churches. That family is now here. They, this family has gotten a swimming pool for the 17-year-old just in time for summer here. He is playing soccer once a week, and they have donated used bikes so they can easily get around. So far, everything is moving forward quite well. And the refugee committee wanted me to let you know that this is a long haul. So right now, there's a lot of people donating, both financials and also time but remember, we need to be sustainable in our efforts, so there'll be other times along the up way here uh, for you to give in the many ways that you're giving. If you are interested in financially giving to our refugee fund, please contact our treasurers, Sue and Chrissy, and they will make the donation to our refugee fund. So we thank you for that in all the many ways, and we pray for uh, this family. And many of you know from last week, the mother is uh, very close to giving a, a new baby into the world. So we pray for this family right now as well. I also want you to know for children and families, there's an opportunity for Vacation Bible School, July 18th through the 22nd. Traditionally, St. John's UCC in Bullsburg in Zion Lutheran Church in Bullsburg hosts, and we are always welcome to come. Uh, the activities are 515 to 7.30 at night, that's just over in Bullsburg. And if interested, uh, please let me know and I'll connect you to the right people. Thank you to everybody who came out to the Pride, Pentecost, Potluck, Picnic, let's add another P, and Prayer in the park. Oh, we did it, all of them. Uh, how many of you were there last week? Yeah, it was a great turnout, we had fun, and I want you to know there was no rain. We did it. There was no rain. So good job praying, church. <laughs> uh, so thank you to Matthew, Dave, April, and Brittany, and Lois, and others on the fellowship committee for putting that beautiful picnic together. And uh, if you saw in your email, Jay, who is our, who's a member of our congregation, but a partner in service with the United Church of Christ, is now settled in Dayton, Ohio. There's some lovely pictures of her serving, putting up a van, and I wanted you to know from her, she says, the folks are very welcoming. I survived my first week of work, which mostly was spent meeting folks, getting a tour of the area, getting used to a new truck and trailer, and helping to build a garage. And I love this part. She said, one volunteer on Friday was so impressed with the UCC tool trailer that he said he wants to go to our church now. Who knew it was a conversation trailer? So good work, church, living out the life and the ministry of Jesus. But today, come. Come and put down your burdens. Come and put down the to-do list. Come and put down your news. Come and put down your burdens and find rest in our Lord at the picnic of peace where all are invited. Two things to note. As we continue to move into a little bit more comfortability, if you feel so inclined to either hug or shake in the passing of the peace of Christ, you're welcome to extend your hand. If you do not feel comfortable for germs or social anxiety or whatever, just put your hand on your heart or continue passing the peace of Christ in that way. There are many ways we pass the peace of Christ and we honor where each one of you are at. And with communion today, we will come forward. You're not going to hear that little plastic ripping noise. Praise be to God. And, uh, and, and in the theme of picnic, I want you to have this image in your mind. What if Jesus were to walk in here with a picnic basket 
and grapes and bread and lemonade and honey for all of us to come and share and dine here at the picnic of peace that our Lord sets before us. So keep that image as you come forward today and we'll come more uh, at that moment. Are there any announcements I'm missing? If you're at home, I invite you to light your candles as we have here on our chancel and altar to symbolize that Christ is the head of our church, Christ is the one in whom we follow, and that light is in us, calling us to be the light of the world. So no matter who you are or where you are on your journey, you are welcome here in this sanctuary of blessing, of healing, and of God's peace. Come and lay down your burdens, for Christ is the one who will carry them. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we can do that by calling each other into worship, and Diane will lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. Please read the bolded text. Rejoice, people of God. This is our Sabbath day. God ordained the Sabbath, rest, and restoration. God is the one who is worshiped, our creator, healer, and inspiration. So then, let us worship God. We worship the Lord with gladness. Please stand as you are able for our prayer of confession. Patient Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second we crowd in as much activity as we can and then wonder why we are so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes time to be with others, we spend our time worrying about details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in our faith. Help us to place ourselves in your care. Slow us down just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and truly enjoy and share the blessings you have given to us. This in Jesus' name, amen. People of God, receive this assurance. As far as the east is from the west, so far have our sins been removed from us. You are forgiven, you are freed, and you are loved as you are. Come, come and share in the peace that passes all understanding. The peace with our God, the peace within your own heart, and the peace with our neighbors. As a sign of that peace, I invite you now to share in the peace of Christ here among neighbors. The peace of God be with you all. Peace be with you, peace be with you. Uh, peace to new and old friends, peace to those at home. God's peace protect and guide you. Let us remain standing in body or spirit as you are able and sing our opening hymn, hymn number 85, and we're actually just gonna sing those two verses in the hymnal. I woke up this morning, and we did, praise be.
Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. On the sixth day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work he had done in creation. Our second reading is from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Words from the Lord. Thank you, Diane, and for your ministry that oversees all of our liturgists. Diane is the one who organizes, and we thank you for your, your ministry. Because Jay went on the road. <laughs> and we thank you, Jay, as well. It takes the whole church, the whole community. Uh, do you know there, there were 12 verses to I woke up this morning that I was listening to? Yeah, you remember this, yes. And... Uh, People convinced me to keep whittling it down, but I, if you want to talk about it later, okay, good. We can, we'll find those other verses. <laughs> we can keep singing. I got a tambourine back here. Please join me in a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart lead us to resurrection, O oh Christ. You, the light of the world, guiding us, protecting us, and nurturing us in our soul and mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What are some of your favorite summer activities? I'm going to come to you. I want you to shout them out. What are some of your favorite summer activities? Gardening. How many gardeners in here? Oh, yes, you know that. Yeah. What else are some of your favorite Grandchildren coming, how many? Yes, nieces, nephews, children. Others, what are some of your favorite summer activities? Swimming, Swimming. Uh, in a pool or in a river or a lake? Anything. Oh, anything, anything, okay. Anything, we'll take it. Kayaking, yes, <laughs> kayak church. We're gonna do that in August again, kayaking. Others? Blueberries, yeah. Any of you get your Kiwanis blueberries? Yeah, I got some of those. What, Diane, what's yours? Uh, smelling. I, I, I just love the smell of summer, and it reminds me of when I was just outside as a kid all the time. The smell of summer. Oh, yeah. It just it reminds Diane of this being outside all the time as a kid. I like the smell of flowers in the summertime, too. There's a lot of, a lot of farm smells this time of year, too. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, are there other other things that you like that are summer activities? <laughs> Music? Amusement parks. Amusement parks, yeah. Jesse introduced me to Knobles. I love it there. That's fun. We like going there. Music outdoors. Oh, those, that's so fun. Going to concerts outdoors. Arts Fest coming back in a couple of weeks. Oh, isn't it nice to see things returning and things coming back and us reconnecting. Maybe for the kids that I know all of you are traveling, all of our kids are, maybe colorful sidewalk chalk with crooked hopscotch boxes, maybe a nap on a hot summer day out in a hammock. A couple weeks ago, my friend Sylvia took me to a beehive a few blocks away from our house. I've been very interested in the life of bees and the pollination in my garden. How, do we have any beekeepers? Any of you beekeepers? Okay, maybe some of us at home. And I think bees, I think bees are beautiful. I know we're taught to be scared of them, but I think bees are really beautiful. So I suited up, I put a tan beekeeper's uniform on, I put the, the mesh over my head and I made sure that there were no little areas for the bees to crawl in because I didn't want a little surprise. I wanted us to be friends still. 
I put long gloves on my hand, tucked my shirt in, and Sylvia handed me this frame from the beehive, and it was heavy, full of honey. And, and so many bees were swarming around it, working, laying eggs. And at one point in the hive, as we were looking for the queen, I quietly stood still as hundreds of bees flew around me, just curious about me as I was about them. And though my instincts told me that I should be fearful, I trusted and rested in that moment. And I rested as the busy bees flew around me buzzing. And it was almost, speaking of smells and sounds, it was almost the same feeling I get when I'm looking at water and hear the meditation of the waves coming in. Oh, it was, it was something I have not experienced yet. That buzzing sound was so meditative. Stopping and resting allows us a chance to gain perspective and trust God. In that moment, right before I stopped, I could feel my fight or flight kicking in. You know that feeling of fight or flight? I had this thought in my head, I should just run away and get as far away from the bees as I could or start batting. You know, we do this with mosquitoes. Oh, get away, get away, get away. But neither of those things would have been good for me or the bees. So I stood still, trusting that as they worked buzzing around me, if I stood there for a moment to take it in, the bees and I could work together and not against each other. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Stop from the buzzing of the world for one day. The world will continue on without you. Yes, there are really important and timely causes for justice that need our attention, but just stop for one day. Yes, there are people that need our help and charity and casseroles, but just stop for one day. And yes, the pile of work probably does not end, but stop for one day. Sabbath interrupts the drive to keep doing, and God beckons us and gently says to our hearts, stop and come find rest for your weary souls. Come and lay down your burdens, Trust me while the world buzzes around you. In the passage that Diane read so beautifully, we hear that this isn't just a Ten Commandment, one of the Ten Commandments, but even God. God rested. God said, I gotta, I gotta put this down now for a moment. Rest is holy. Sabbath is not necessarily all about a specific day. I grew up in an area of West Michigan where not too long before I arrived, there were rules against mowing the lawn. There were rules about what you could or couldn't wear. There were rules about what you could or couldn't do. And it did not capture the spirit of scripture of rest. Remember our Jewish friends like Rabbi Tehila, which side note, I'm really trying to get her to come here in August when we do kayak church, she's really trying. So I wanted you to know that. But remember our Jewish friends observe their Sabbath from sundown on Friday night to sundown on Saturday. And I know for those 24 hours, Tehillah's phone is turned off. In fact, we went over to her house for Sabbath dinner in Brooklyn a couple years ago, and we got lost the first time. And normally you text somebody, right? That didn't happen, <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't get a hold of her. So we came an hour late. And Sabbath really reorients your whole way of working together. We just had to trust we would get there eventually. We had to trust. And through an anxious hour, I eventually did trust when we got there. <laughs> Sabbath means we stop physically, mentally, and we spiritually renew. 
you are actually honoring God when you rest. Sabbath says, above all worries you have in the world, and we have a few right now, we will still stop and find rest and joy and God alone, the maker of our souls, the one in whom we can trust. I think Sabbath is an act of tremendous faith in an ancient world, in an anxious world. So today we start a six-week summer devotional series called Sing, Play, Summer. This devotional is great for the whole family, and these songs are gospel bluegrass that share a scriptural message and are toe-tapping. And there are hard copies of the devotional for you in the back to go along and to imagine and dream with your soul this summer. It gives some rich possibilities of fun and joy and Sabbath rest for each one of us, including this week a couple yummy lemonade recipes. And an inquiry, inquiry in the, your devotional is, can you discover five facts about bees in which the honey on the table, I want you to know, is actually honey. One of them is from the hive that we looked at, and the other one is from another hive in State College. This is local honey. We're not going to put that on our bread today, but if, talk to me afterwards and we can, we can work something out. But honey to the table here. So here's a little heads up to the homework and the devotional that you can put in there. How many times does the Bible mention honey? Take a guess. How many times does the Bible mention honey? Shout out your guess. 25. 60. 90. Four. I just put four in there. Jared, you're very close. 61 times the Bible mentions honey. There's a fact about honey for you in the Bible. Honey's very important spiritual symbol, actually. So that's one of your five things you can use for your devotional. This devotional gives us rich possibilities for fun, biblical exploration and, and joy, and a chance for us to slow down and renew and take care of our soul. When the weight of the world tries to stir our hearts into worry, guard your Sabbath day of rest even more. Come back to God, come back to your heart, Come back to the trust, even as it feels like the world might be unraveling at times. Come back to the precious soul that God created in you. And rest, trusting that God is with you. Today we come to a place where we spiritually find rest. We meet at the Lord's table, which today is the picnic of peace. Some of you may share in a picnic tomorrow for the holiday and roasting hot dogs or hamburgers or marshmallows and sparklers. But today I want you to imagine that Jesus is here and he has brought the picnic basket and a food for our souls to sustain us in the week ahead. Fresh lemonade and honey and bread to share with us all. Come and find rest at the picnic of peace. Come and find joy at the picnic of peace. And as we prepare our hearts and minds for this feast, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to come to the picnic of peace, uh, we're going to listen to a song from our devotional. And the, the group is called Big Butterfly fish, butterfly fish, uh, and it was sent out to you, but I, I want us to kind of get into that picnic mode, and their song is called Lemonade, and I couldn't get the connector to work back here, so I'm going to play it from this microphone, So, but all of the words are in your bulletin. So this is our hymn, our, our joyful summer hymn to lead us to the table. On a summer day, we're just wishing the clouds away. Sipping lemonade, there's a bumblebee who's a little in love with me. Can't you see? He's bumble, bumble. 
some fellow spending his time. Flower so fine, he's a bee in his prime. Here with me sipping my lemon and lime. We have got it made. A swing in here in the summer shade. Sipping lemonade. A bubble I just blew is a little in love with you. And I am too. Cuddling here on the swing, we can do anything while we swing and swing. We can sing and sing. The bubbles popping, we're not stopping. We're on a roll. We don't have any goal. We're just hitting your soul. We can sit here some more and more and more on a summer day. We're just wishing the clouds away, sipping lemonade. Wishing the clouds away, sipping lemonade. And that's the point of Sabbath, sipping lemonade, coming back together for the soul. Isn't that a great song? I think you'll, you'll like these songs. The other one that was sent out to you was about Jonah and the whale, which is next week. We'll get there. First, lemonade. People of God, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the picnic of peace, the Lord's table, where we are all invited to come and dine and find rest. Whether you've been excluded at other tables or told that you could not come, this table is open to all people, all people. This is not my table. This is not this church's table. This is the table of Christ. And Christ is the one who welcomes each of you to come and dine. There is enough room at this picnic for all of us. So I invite you to look into your bulletin as we welcome each other to this picnic of peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly, it is right and good to give our God thanks and praise, for he is the one that has nourished us, the one that sustains us, and the one in whose mercy and grace gives us hope each morning. This is the table of feast, of forgiveness. It is the bread of blessing. It is the grapes of goodness, where all of us come as equals to come and find rest. So therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends like us, and he took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in memory of me for the forgiveness of sins. They took in the bread and they shared it together while they were eating and dining. And in a moment later, he took the cup, which he blessed also, and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Every time you drink of it, remember me, for I am with you always. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, which is each one of you at home, here, and around the world. We join with our family of faith at the picnic of peace. Let me offer a word of prayer and a few instructions on how to come forward. First, there are a couple 
gluten-free breads. I think Jesus probably put that in the picnic table to, for some of you. That's good, the picnic basket. Gluten-free is here. We're going to invite people to come forward and to receive the bread and, a, and the grape. It's a cr cracker and a grape, just like a picnic, but it's the Lord's feast. And you're welcome to take that with you, and we will partake in the feast together at your pew. We'll have the first pews come forward, and then the last pews come at the very end there. Does that make sense? Okay, let us pray. Oh, and I wanted to show you this sweet little one, too. This sweet little one dressed in a mustard bottle today for the picnic of peace. Yeah, so let us pray together. God, the world goes on, and we are reminded in humility how very little we can control. So help us to come and find rest for our souls at this picnic of peace where we are invited to dream, to hope, to find the sacrament of grace that nourishes our soul and reminds us of the freedom of forgiveness that we have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, you're invited to come forward first row and to take in the sacraments here. The body and blood.
the body and blood of Christ, the bread of blessing and the grapes of goodness at the picnic of peace. Let us feast. Let us pray. God, nourish us in this sacrament so that we come together as your body to follow you, the light of the world, in humility and mercy and in justice. Come and touch our lives with your peace. Amen. Those grapes are thick. <laughs> well, we have, we have picnicked together, we've come, we've been invited by Christ and uh, Christ's servant June, who set the picnic table for us. Thank you so much, June. And we come and we pray together and we share our burdens and concerns and our joys with one another and our prayers come from you. And so if you have prayer requests or praises at home, we would love to hear them. You're welcome to write them in the chat box, and Jesse will read them out loud with us. And we would love to know how to pray with and for you and rejoice alongside you. And the same here in person. What can we be praying for with one another together here? A YouTuber I watched um, recently passed from cancer, so I wanted to pray for his family and friends that they'd be at peace and know that he's in a better place now. Our prayers are with you. Other prayers. Yes, good, I'm getting steps in. <laughs> I'm thinking of my son and his wife who lost their home in Colorado on December 30th and who have been wandering across the country, staying with various people, including us, for a few weeks. A couple of days ago, they started back to Colorado and were staying with friends there temporarily, but their travels and their, their, uh, long and sad journey looking for a home which keeps they have they have a townhouse being built but they're waiting for the final inspections and things like that to be settled so and what are your kids name this is andrew and his wife Brittany. andrew and Brittany. we and, pray and the, the uh, grand puppies two corgis alby and uh, and piper we pray for alby and parker too, as well, with the corkies. God loves all creatures, great and small. Our prayers are with your family. Other prayers are thanksgivings. Jesse, are there any at home? Yeah. Yes, we have two um, and a few more coming in here. First, Jane Childs is asking for prayer for the people of Ukraine, for food, their homes, their lives, and to keep them safe. Signe, Georgia, and Marina are um, asking or giving prayers of thanks for their family's continued recovery from COVID. Uh, Cassie is asking for prayer. Uh, they woke up this morning with a bad sore throat and laryngitis and that they're hoping it's nothing too serious. Sue Cromwell is asking for prayers for those recovering from surgeries, accidents, and for the Afghan family as they acclimate to State College. And those are our prayers online this morning. Thank you, and I, I think that was Casey, um, I think, 
And if that is Casey, we pray for you um, and all of the prayers that have been mentioned from those worshiping at home and those who are traveling. Of course, we continue to pray for and with Ukraine for God's peace. I think, I think of all of those who have been enduring not peace for, for a while. And I think of preparing a place, how God is preparing a place of peace for all of us. Um, and I, we pray for God's peace, healing, and we pray for our family um, who are resettling here, that they would find home uh, and that we would be good neighbors to one another. For all of the prayers that are in our heart and our mind, so many that we haven't named out loud. Each one of us have prayers that we're praying. We pray, Lord, hear our prayers and your mercy. And we trust that the Spirit is praying for us and with us on behalf of all of our prayers. So let us join our hearts together around the world as we pray in the unity of the Spirit. Let us pray. God, our creator, we pause maybe for the first time this week on the Sabbath day to rest. We take a deep breath. And we lay our burdens in your hands. We lay the world's worries in your hands. We, weigh our, we lay our stresses in your hands so that we may find life anew. Heal those in need of healing. Be with all of those at home worshiping, those who are in prison, and loved ones who are not with their loved ones because they are behind bars. We pray in your mercy. We pray for those who are tired of fighting and we pray for your peace to reign on this earth. We pray for areas that need clean water and good food. We pray for our neighbors here in our area, in our towns, that we may serve one another in humility and joy and love that we may be quick to compassion and kindness, that we may be quick to faith in you. And when the worlds and the waters are chaotic, Christ come even closer to our lives and our home. We pray for our church, that you may continue to guide us, that we may follow according to your grace and mercy and the resurrection we profess. We pray for all churches and all houses of faith in our community, and we pray for your kindness and understanding and for all to have a place for their soul to find rest. Hear our personal prayers in this moment of silence. Together in the strength of the unity of our faith, we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Ever loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, there are offering plates by your, the doors on your way out. Also, there's a QR code on your screen as well as the QR code in your bulletin. Our special offering 
for the month of July is with Out of the Cold, which Amy leads as our representative here. Um, and we've just been blessed to be able to serve and come alongside of our friends and neighbors uh, who live here in our community. Uh, together, let us stand, embody our spirit as you are able, and sing our praises in our doxology. People of God, as we remain standing, let us sing our closing hymn, hymn number 17, to you, O God, all creatures sing, speaking of the animals and bees and dogs, the whole earth is singing in praise of our God. Let us sing together, number 17.
people of God, as we go forth from this place, this holiday weekend, be safe, whatever you do, and this sparklers, and wherever you go, and maybe you'll have a picnic, and remember Christ is there with you. And as you go forth from here, receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God look to you and bring you peace. Go forward this week knowing how much Christ loves you. Share that love for the world around you. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.